Hello, my name is Tyler Owen of Random Seed Games, and today I wanted to show you guys a little bit more detail of our Song Seed Music Manager uh, Dynamic Music Composer for Unity. Uh, it's a plugin that we're going to be putting up on the Asset Store in the near future, and we're using it in two of our games, Time Frame and Lacuna Passage. Um, so let's just show you real quick a quick example um, of what the system can do. So this is a first-person character controller testing scene that we've put together that will be an example in the plugin when it goes live on the asset store. So let's just walk through it real quick. So we've got these colored gates in the first-person demo scene that if you walk through them you'll see on the right-hand side uh, that we get some information in one of our music managers. So I've got two inspectors locked to two different music managers in our scene. So music managers are one of the most important components of our song seed system. Each music manager has its own audio clips um, that determine which ones can be accessible and played at the same time. So in music manager one, which is not playing right now, we have a bunch of clips uh, that compose a specific song that we want to make. So each clip is a piece of the song. And over here in Music Manager 2, we've got an ambient intro and an ambient loop. Um, so at the beginning, when we walked through that first gate, it started playing those intro and loops. Um, but now we can see we'll go ahead and go through another gate. We've got three different options. So dynamic music, three different options. Uh, let's go through the blue gate over here and you'll immediately hear music manager number one kick in. So, I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the volume really quick here just so that we uh, aren't overloading the video stream. Um, but, so now we've got, we just walked through that blue gate and now we're in this blue area. So. We're playing a loop over and over uh, from our first music manager that you can see on the right hand side here. And then in our second music manager, it's still playing, but the volume has gone all the way down. Um, and we'll, we'll show you guys how you can put in these uh, calls for our song seed system here in just a second. Uh, but if we go through this one, we'll see on our first music manager that we queued up a bridge and now we fade it to an, a new loop. So we've queued in some new music now. And we'll just go into this next area here. And let's go through another gate. And you'll see we queued up a new bridge and loop, uh, but this time we, we have to wait until the end of the current clip is playing before it'll transition now. So now we're back to the bridge. And another loop. And so this testing scene is just a great way for people to see how uh, we can switch between loops and bridges dynamically. And now this final gate we walk through is going to be an outro. And then here at the end, we'll go back to the beginning. And there you have it. So that is the Song Seed Dynamic Music System in action. So let's go into a little more detail about how we did this. Uh, the system itself is completely independent of time signature. So you are required to manage your time signature and beats per measure and all that in your audio files that you bring in. So in each of our audio files that we have here, uh, we are getting um, we have the audio file here, and we're using that in the system to call when we do triggers. So triggers are what can reference these clips in our music managers and uh, do different things with those audio clips. So let's look at one of our triggers in the scene. So over here at the very beginning of the scene, we've got this yellow gate that you can walk through, and there's our first person controller back there. Uh, so this is what the universal trigger looks like. Uh, so we have the trigger type, and on in our case we've got on trigger enter, which is a built-in function for a 
trigger volume and unity and then the collider we have a bunch of different ways we can match the collider and in our case we're using by collider name and we're doing the FPS player game object which is this guy right here and so it's gonna make sure that only the only thing that can trigger this song change is our first person uh, player game object and then we're calling a function of our song seed system called bridge loop post uh, bridge loop post is one uh, one type of s new clip call where it's going to be calling in a bridge and a loop to follow it. And you can see here it explains what a bridge loop post does and what you need to set. Uh, and we also have a blend time setting which uh, is important for how the clips will blend with each other in just that microsecond between the two clips. Um, you can set it down to a really really low value uh, so that it's practically a um, no fade at all uh, so it's practically uh, imperceptible um, but let's just take a look here and see what some of our other uh, types are so we've got uh, a bunch of other of triggers in our scene and they each do different things and you can even have multiple triggers on the same object and in this case we're triggering a um, a song change on Music Manager 1 and then we're also doing a volume change on Music Manager 2. And Music Manager 2 is that intro music at the beginning where we have our two this one was the intro music, this one was the other clip music that comes in later and we set the volume down to zero uh, for that second Music Manager which was the intro music so in that same collision volume we've, we're calling two different music managers doing two different things that are happening at the same time um, and so one thing you might notice uh, in the scene is you can experiment with volume also while you're playing so that you can uh, obviously these kind of settings won't be uh, in the a build since you're doing it straight from the inspector but if you want you can go in here and you can change the volume of a single music manager or you can do the master volume uh, if this one was up you can see we'd have the master volume going down for both of them uh, so yeah those changes won't obviously happen for people playing your game but for testing purposes in the inspector this is really valuable uh, and you can also see obviously the information about what's currently playing the name of the clip what it's doing, uh, the length, and the time remaining. Um, so those are really important things for feedback while you're testing your uh, dynamic music comp compositions. Um, let's take a look quick again at the universal trigger and we'll see that you can also quickly uh, more easily manage which music managers you're uh, controlling uh, with these buttons here that say click to select music manager and it'll jump right to the one that you're associating that universal trigger with. Um, and then one other thing real quick is we also have this thing in our music manager to do different ways of loading your music at runtime. Uh, there is the manual mode which is where you directly bring in audio clips and associate them with your scene and those are loaded into memory right when the scene is loaded uh, or you can do click this button to switch to dynamic loading mode uh, in which case you need to have all your files in the resources folder which all of ours are and then you can have the file name of the audio file and it'll load that from the resources folder uh, with a method call that you can use in a universal trigger uh, so for example in our scene we could have this uh, intro uh, universal trigger it could call the load music list which would load in all the music from that dynamic uh, music manager so that way you can load and unload your music depending on what your what is happening in your game at that moment uh, if you want to have a ton of different songs in your game you can only load the one that's currently playing and use that as a single music manager that is loaded at runtime so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, 
if you guys have any other questions or anything you want to learn about the Songseed Dynamic Music Composer, uh, just ask in the comments or you can email us at randomseedgames, uh, contact at randomseedgames.com. So yeah, thanks for watching.